Good afternoon and welcome to Bloomberg Quint Live. These are the headlines at 12. The markets take a breather from record run uh, but continue to hold up at record levels. Metals weigh heavy while IT players extend support. India VIX surges. United Spirits registers its sharpest intraday fall in six months after the spirit maker misses estimates in the third quarter. Tata Consultancy Services reclaimed its tag as India's most valued company after it overtook Reliance Industries' market capitalization today. And Idea Cellular and Indigo Airlines are the two big earnings that you have to watch out for today. And with that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for Hot Money. Thank you, Alex. Hello and welcome to Hot Money on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. This is a show which gets you a complete wrap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. I'm Darshan Mehta. Let's welcome our experts then, Ashwin Agarwal of Newberry PMS, Samir Kalra of Target Investing and Savi Jain of 2.2 Capital. All of them join us on the show. Today on Hot Money, we'll discuss stocks like Havels, United Spirits, Edelweiss and we'll ask them their budget pick for 2018. Let's start with the first one and that is Havels. The company did manage to report a strong set of numbers. The management commentary was also decent. Yesterday, the counter did have a rally, but today it seems to be down in today's trade. What should one do with Havels? Is it the stock that one should accumulate in their portfolio or an avoid? We'll ask our guest. Uh, Samir, I'll start with you. Uh, any view on the Havels numbers, the management commentary and what should one do? So if you see the numbers, uh, you'll have to separate it into two parts. One is the Lloyd's acquisition, which mm. they did. The numbers were really bad over there, hmm. from my point of view, because the ad spends were there, which were higher than normalized, you know, Havels, hmm. 3 to 4 percent, Lloyd's was around 8 to 9 percent, and it's any which way a lean quarter for them, because summer is the main uh, time where Lloyd's picks up the sales. Hmm. Uh, second, on the Havels uh, alone standard basis, the lightning and electric durables part did a good amount of growth that's around 20 to 23 percent, hmm. but the cables uh, growth was around 3 to 4 percent, cables and switchgear, hmm. which is the core hmm. system of Havels, right? The margins came off better because of the cables uh, margins getting better off hmm. because of the product mix. And uh, <coughs> so I am more neutral towards Havels because the only point is this kind of acquisition from my point of view is more cash consuming. Hmm. So where I could have seen a free cash flow post the sale of, hmm. you know, Sevilla, I am again seeing a cash consuming business. Okay. So I am a little neutral to it. I just want to see how much cash does it actually burn out. Because okay. Lloyd's is now having a new emission energy norms. Hmm which will take a good amount of capex for a technology change in all durables. Okay, so you, you are not very impressed with uh, the acquisition that they did. Coming out no. of Sylvania uh, and getting yeah. into another business which they, they probably... Yeah, because do you think a turnaround is possible for Lloyd's? No, it, it is. See, I'm not giving up on hmm. the whole system, otherwise I would have been bearish on it. But the only point is it becomes... Like if you can have a free cash flow and give it out to the investors and either Either you see your core business running out of the cash component, as in you can't uh, capitalize in that and mm. get a higher growth. That's why you generally take a call of acquiring something. Mm. Now this acquisition is a very competitive place. Mm. So the margins are very fluctuating in the nature of it. It looks good in the sense of end consumer is, you know, a B2C. But I think it's more of wait and watch for me. Okay, what about you, uh, Savi? What did you make of the numbers? Yeah, so numbers are pretty good actually and we see Havels as a key beneficiary uh, of GST where we see a significant shift from the unorganized segment mm. to the organized segment. Also there was reduction in GST uh, rate for one of its uh, key product categories which is cables. So overall, uh, uh, you know, we see uh, gain in market share uh, in its uh, categories as uh, Havels increases its mm. distribution points and uh, uh, also, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, innovative marketing etc but uh, a large part of its business comes from a, you know almost a commodity kind of business which is the cables and switch gears 
which uh, is largely dependent on the prospects of real on how real estate pans out and that is something that uh, is is obviously on a slowdown due to gst and rera so that's a large part of business more than 40% of his revenues which is seeing which will see some kind of a challenge lloyds i like I, I, you know samir said i agree with him you need to pan you need to see how that pans out it was a low margin business mm -hmm. but uh, and it's a different distribution network altogether so there's very little synergy with the existing distribution mm -hmm. network so uh, the peak season is the next two quarters so let's see how that pans out uh, it trades at more than 40 times one year forward earnings mm -hmm. so leaving very little uh, room for uh, you know error mm -hmm. So therefore, we are neutral on the stock, although we are positive on the business. Okay, so valuations is something that you're not comfortable yeah. for Havels at this point of yeah. time. Yeah. Anything else in this consumer discretionary space that uh, you know probably is a better bet than Havels if someone wants to put in their money? Well, um, you know, uh, most of the consu consumption themes are trading at lifetime highs. Hmm. Uh, we we have invested in the luggage space, uh, which which has also significantly re-rated over the last one year. Uh, you know, like VIP industries is something that we own, hmm. but even that is now uh, you know trading at a significantly high multiple. Hmm. However, there is a significant expansion in EBITDA margin happening. You know, from uh, eight percent kind of EBITDA margin levels a year back, they they may reach more than twelve percent. So that is leading to a significant uh, expansion in profitability. If that continues to pan out, it is probably one stock that you could invest in but maybe uh, at a better uh, entry price okay so that's the view two oh. neutral views or cautious views that are coming in on havels and uh, do you share the cautious view on yeah, havels as so well? i'm bearish uh, basically agree with what the other guests are saying i think it's a good company but it's just not trading at cheap valuation so i'll look for a better entry point but it's a good brand and i think they should be able to scale up most of their product lines in the long run just I think the valuations are a little rich. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in on Havels at this point of time. Uh, none of our guests are rather bullish uh, uh, on the stock price currently given the fact that uh, valuations are certainly not supporting Havels. The stock is down almost over 1% in trade today. The next stock that we'll talk about is pretty much the stock of the day and that is United Spirits. Extremely weak set of numbers that uh, was reported. The counter is down almost uh, 7% and along with it, it's taken the entire uh, alcohol space down with it. So name the stocks, uh, Libeta Radico or any other stock. All of them are trading down post weak numbers from United Spirits. What should one do on United Spirits uh, post uh, this number? We'll ask our guest. Uh, Savi, what did you make of United Spirits numbers? Uh, is is this a one-off or uh, uh, do you believe that you know such weakness will continue? So last quarter was a very good yes. set of numbers and the stock is significantly re-rated since then. <clears throat> but uh, you know we, we are pretty negative on the entire liquor space although we like the uh, consumption theme but uh, you know we, the government interference uh, in the form of you know pricing or distribution or branding is something that we are not comfortable with also liquor has been kept out of the GST framework so mm. that allows states to levy arbitrary taxes on uh, on, on liquor uh, companies be it in the form of VAT or excise mm. uh, so that is also something that's a key risk uh, for for liquor companies we had the highway ban last mm. uh, quarter where uh, you know supreme court also stepped in so mm. they are being uh, hammered from uh, beat state governments or the central government or even the supreme court now uh, given all these uncertainties, uh, you know, and that the stock trades at more than 50 times uh, uh, FI20 earnings, mm. so leaving very, very little room for any kind of uh, you know negative surprise. Uh, so overall, although we like the liquor space, but we are not comfortable with the uh, structural regulatory uncertainties that are always there with this kind of a theme. It's considered a sin item by mm. the government. You look at ITC, you know, it's trading at much cheaper valuation with a much better balance sheet with a similar product profile you know the government is not very uh, very uh, positive on that segment as well so uh, given all of these things we, we we would avoid something like a united spirit okay so it's an avoid given the fact that there are regulatory issues as well as valuations are expensive uh, ashwin uh, do you share the same view or uh, yeah pretty, uh, pretty much i do share the same view the problem is in india the taxation is way better on cigarettes compared to alcohol like in most countries Cigarettes are a little higher tax, but in India it's reverse. So even if you look at USL, almost 66% of their revenue is purely excise a duty that goes to the government. So apart from that, like I, they they have like an 8,000 revenue if you exclude the excise duty. 
So I, it's trading at too rich of valuations, but the the future of the company totally depends on government action regarding taxation. Hmm. So I think once that changes, it's a definitely an amazing company, but. I don't know much about how the government is going to go on this, so at current valuations, I wouldn't be buying. Okay, so valuations concern again for United Spirits and uh, Samira, uh, do you share the same concerns in terms of valuation? So I am a little neutral to positive hmm. on the firm. Okay. Uh, if you see this result, the main hit was from the excise duty. Hmm. So last year, same quarter, they did around 65% of the revenues went to the excise duty. This time it was 68 hmm. and last quarter was around 61. Hmm. So there was a huge jump in the excise duty. Now what happens out here generally if you see the alcohol systems, after the GST being applied, there were a lot of states which applied an additional duty over alcohol hmm. to compensate the revenue losses <coughs> which were you know, being paid after a certain time. So out here, but if you see in the recent from January, Karnataka is one of the biggest states of the alcohol hmm. consumption, right? And Karnataka prices were the most expensive out of the whole country hmm. because there was a 21% kind of additional duty on the hmm. alcohol consumption. They revised it to a flat fee. Hmm. So anything now selling around 15,000 will have a 3,000 rupees kind of a flat fees. And below that till 8,000 will have a 2,000 rupees flat fee as a additional duty. So. Now, if you see the prices, uh, a regular black label 70, 750 ml, which used to sell for 7,000 in Karnataka, has now come down to 4,500 hmm. because of that flat fee change. So this is a big boost, I think, for the volumes in that state. Hmm. Because it's, it was now uh, at par nationally. So the prices are nationally almost at par. So that kind of helps the volume boost going ahead. So this became effective Jan 3rd. Hmm. So I am a little positive because of this, because it contributes like a 35% of a volume over there hmm. for all alcohol consumption as such. So I think I am a little positive on the volume growth. <coughs> which will help all these kind of operating leverage to kick in otherwise. Okay, no, no, I just wanted some more clarity. What was yeah. this 3,000, uh, on so, what 15,000, are you saying per uh, so bottle or what? There is it? one central excise duty which has to be paid and there's additional duties which are added by states hmm. to compensate their revenue losses okay. on other products. So what they had done in GSG when got applied after three months, they increased the additional duty on alcohol products. I'm talking about Karnataka hmm. as a state alone. So they made it 21% of the MRP, hmm. which was a big hit for all these firms. Now in December, they issued a notification that there will be now flat fee rather than a percentage hmm. of the MRP. So every so there's a case of uh, alcohol. Hmm. So every case which has a value till 15,000 will be 3,000 which it has to pay. Hmm. Earlier on paying of all these additional, it was around 6,000. Okay. So that has gone 50% down. Okay. Anything having 8,000 to 15,000 case value will have to pay 2,000. Hmm. Earlier it was 5,000. Hmm. So that decrease has helped all these alcohol companies to reduce their prices in Karnataka. Okay. So that's where the benefit of the volume is expected to come hmm. out. Okay. And how important is Karnataka for United States? How much percent? So of that's the term? around 25 to 30 percent. 25 to 30 percent. Okay. In the volume terms. Okay. So it's an interesting uh, observation that uh, Samir has put across as far as United States is, is concerned. Both Savi and Ashwin are uh, rather negative on it uh, because of valuation concern. But uh, um, Sami does believe that, you know, from going ahead because of uh, the duty structure change, there could be, you know, uh, probably some bit of tailwinds that could come in on United Spirits. Let's talk about the next one and that is Edelweiss. Came out with a pretty strong set of numbers. Uh, uh, what should one do with Edelweiss and, the and, and you know, uh, the brokerage community because most of them have run up significantly. So is there much more room for them to expand because uh, as, you, as you see, 155% gain in the last 12 months for an Edelweiss. So is Edelweiss the preferred pick or would they shift to someone else or uh, uh, is broking space uh, a complete avoid? We'll ask our guest. What about you, Ashwin? Any view on Edelweiss? So basically, Edelweiss has now transitioned from a broking company to NBFC as in they still have broking and wealth management but majority of their profits come from SME lending 
I personally feel it's a risky space and uh, considering the valuations Evilvice is trading at, it might be a risky bet to make. Like, so this is basically their first cycle of lending. So we don't know, because it's difficult in financial companies to really uh, pinpoint the problem till it's already too late. So I would be a little cautious, that's why I'm negative considering. I would want to uh, wait a longer time to see how good the underwriting is. Okay, so that's a, a slightly negative view that's coming in. Sami, what did you make of Edelweiss's numbers? The numbers were very good. In fact, the company is doing very well for the last uh, f few years. It has transformed itself, uh, itself from being a pure play investment banker in 2010 to now a, a financial conglomerate mm. with uh, you know credit being a large part of its business now contributing more than 60 to 70 percent of its profit mm. and credit to both retail and corporate mm. and retail is what they're trying to grow at a significant pace then there is the wealth management business which obviously mm. is doing very well the asset management business and the capital market business uh, all of which are doing very well insurance is a business which is not doing great so uh, you know there is uh, some kind of a tail in terms of uh, the financialization of savings that has happened over the last few years okay. also the equity markets have performed very well so at least some part of the business is cyclical in that sense because whenever the markets uh, you know correct I think that, that the significantly that is a business that may take a hit which is the capital market asset management and the wealth management business um, overall uh, even the insurance business is something that I, that we don't like because it does not have a banker partner hmm. and for in, in for, for to succeed in insurance in India you need to have uh, bank assurance partner or a parentage hmm. so th that's a business that's seeing losses uh, despite all of the, uh, you know this uh, the, the company's done well uh, and uh, uh, it's grown significantly uh, oh, it's trading at close to three and a half times uh, price to book hmm. one year forward uh, given the growth profile that is there, I think it's a reasonable uh, valuation mm. and therefore we are slightly neutral to positive on the stock. Uh, you know, uh, some of the, the ROE of the company ha ha is being dragged down by the insurance business and if that is something that they, uh, you know, divest off, I think the business becomes much stronger. Okay, so that's the key trigger that you're looking at, yeah, the but insurance I, business, but so I don't if think, it happens. I don't think they're looking to do that, but uh, we have not seen any, uh, you know, large players succeeding in insurance. If you take the example of Max as well, mm -hmm. who wanted to merge with HDFC Bank because it did not have a strong mm -hmm. banker partner and the stock is also languished. Uh, uh, you know after the merger failed so that is a business that for, for in which to succeed you need a strong banker partner so that's uh, uh, that's a negative for advice okay what about you Samir any view on advice so I'm neutral to positive on the stock uh, see in five years it's almost three times the revenue hmm. four and uh, four times the pact so there's no doubt of the numbers uh, having that kind of a consistency in quarter on quarter basis the thing if you remove the insurance business which people are negative on the pat was around 272 before after insurance getting it's 236 so there's kind of a 10 percent uh, mm. losses which they are taking on the pat the other way is if you see they have acquired the relegate securities kind of a mm. you know the customer base mm. let's not give a value to that business on the basis of you know the assets and all it's more of the network and even if 90% mm. sticks on, they have a huge wealth management book to grow on. Mm. And uh, this is the only insurance company, uh, financial company, sorry, uh, where you get the exposure of a good ARC as well. Mm. So around asset-wise, 25 to 30% of the <coughs> AUM which they have in total book is ARC-led. Mm. So over there, I think in future, you will see a lot of uh, selling happening and gaining, gaining out profits over there because they are being aggressive on the ARC front as well. Uh, bank assurance partner mm. maybe today or tomorrow, see that's the only lacking trigger on the insurance business. Mm. That is any which way being valued today itself. Okay. So I'm neutral to positive on it but yeah uh, the insurance business is a little drag on it. Okay so that's the view that's coming in on Edelweiss. Uh, two of our guests are slightly neutral to positive. Uh, insurance is the theme that uh, needs to be watched out what they exactly do with it. Uh, that's the view on Edelweiss. Before we move on here's a quick recap of all the guest views on the stocks that we've covered till now.
and since we are in uh, budget week the budget will come out shortly we'll ask our guest uh, whether there is a theme that uh, you know investors should play uh, for the budget and uh, Samir uh, you selected star cement what's the rationale yeah so star cement is a recently listed as in there was a company listed in the group so they merged the company and made it uh, renamed it to star cement it listed in june 2017 so if you see the company they are mainly based in northeastern region hmm. so uh, 85% of the revenues come from the northeast and 15% come from the east side hmm. which is west bengal and all. now the group is the same as century ply hmm. so the chairman is the same as century ply and md is the same there is a joint md who actually runs the operation so uh, out here they have a 19% roe 15% roc hmm. and the plus point is their plants get a lot of uh, excise benefits hmm. and subsidies so they have to have they were due these 500 crores from the central government on mm. these capital outlay which they did last 3 years mm. that has 30% has been received now so they almost are if you count for the subsidy they are almost debt free mm. so right now it stands at 0.31 uh their capacities have expanded from a 1 uh, million ton in 2000 1.6 million ton in 2016 Uh, 13 to 4.3 in 2017. So they've done a big capex. Mm. The only lacking is the pricing power in northeastern region mm. because the capacity is higher than the demand. Mm. So they are not able to raise the pricing. Otherwise, from the volume, they have been growing at a 20 to 25 percent mm. CAGR from past seven years. Okay. So I think that's a one stock which I'm really positive. Okay. About. Star Cement is the pick that Samir has said, and Savi, uh, your pick is Hero Motor Corp. What's the rationale? Yeah, so since you mentioned the budget, you know we expect mm. it to be populist in nature uh, at least the next couple of years because the general elections are on the corner and the popularity of BJP is definitely waned since the last mm. general election. So it's going to be a um, lot of focus and lot of uh, uh, soaps uh, to the uh, marginal section. And uh, Hero Motor Corp is we believe is a key beneficiary of the rural um, uh, revival or mm. consumption. Uh, more than um, you know, 50% of its revenues come from the rural segment. It has more than 50% market share in the entry level motorcycle segment. Uh, the past few years have been tepid uh, in terms of single uh, mm. digit revenue growth, but uh, we see that changing uh, over the next couple of years. Also, the monsoon was not great uh, over the last few years. Uh, it's a great business, market leader, th- more than 35% ROE, uh, growing at right now at single digit and trading at. 20 times trailing earnings so mm. there is very little downside from here on so uh, overall we believe that uh, it's is going to be a key beneficiary of the uh, of the rural um, revival and therefore uh, hero motor corp is our is a is a pick okay that's the view uh, ashwin doesn't have a budget pick as such so we'll avoid that so before we wrap up on the show here's a quick recap of the guest view on the on the budget picks that we spoke about Okay there's no evidence that uh, global stock market rallying is nearing a halt that's the word coming in from John uh, Sudden Sud, uh, sorry Studzenski of Blackstone speaking to Bloomberg Quinn's main Kadoshi he adds that the business leaders globally are very confident of investment opportunities let's listen in Business leaders right now are very positive and they like transformational leaders because they like leaders who have a, have a vision because vision means they putting in place building blocks of a society of an economy the way president xi is obviously doing that with respect to china uh, but you've seen that increasingly in other parts of the world and to a certain extent the tax legislation um with which donald trump enacted uh in the congress at the end of last year i think is going to have a big boost to the us economy for a very interesting reason remember 50% of the us economy are small businesses those small businesses will materially benefit from the tax reduction what will be then the most interesting challenge of 2018 from a business point of view will it be getting over the unpredictability of our leaders well from a business point of view from an investing point of view um you know everyone walks in and says you know should we start moving stocks in the United States into cash 
Real estate's very expensive. Can we continue to invest? And our answer is yes, as long as you find the right real estate and you can enhance its value by buy, fix, and hold, or buy, fix, and sell. And no one can see any evidence of the investment expansion and the performance of the stock market or anything halting. Low volatility, low chance of recession, low interest rates, low inflation, uh, low inflation extremely strong companies in, in India, Japan, much more focused on corporate governance, much more focused on dividends, much more focused on share buybacks. So people are much more conscious of the global investment behavior. Okay, Ashwin, Savi and Samir, thank you so much for joining me on the show. With that, it's a wrap on today's Hot Money. Thanks for watching Bloomberg Quinn. Ask BQ comes up next.